So fir first of all, what is Zoom Info? Who am I? So I'm Aurel, I'm a principal architect at Zoom Info. Uh, we are actually providing a business intelligence platform for our customer to have 360 degree view about their potential customers. So that's enough about us. Let's talk about front end. This is why we are here. So the micro front end chaos. So I don't know who of you already heard about, but let's start it. Let's ask a question. How many of you load um, components in one time dynamically? Raise your hand. Great. How many of you heard about micro front end and micro applications? How many of you heard about module federation and Webpack 5? Awesome, awesome. How many of you already implemented module federation? <laughs> Perfect. Point made. Okay. So the chaos, and then we'll discuss about that, is actually when we are talking about module federation. For whom of you which are not familiar, module federation allows us to build independent chunks of application and consume it in one time. Meaning if I have multiple applications, like in this diagram, I have the navigation, the user, the feed, I am able to build each one of them as a standalone unit and to consume it in one time and not in build time. Now, what is the issue with that? It sounds great. Each developer can develop its own application, do a deployment, and I'm enjoying that item. So let's take this scenario. I have the user, I have the navigation in the feed, and actually, as you can see here, the user application is consumed by navigation and feed. And if I have some developer that just wanted to change the interface or some of the property of the component, I will cause cascading failures. And that is the chaos. It's hard to capture that. It's hard to understand what will be the effect of the change. So yeah, that's not so good. Um, so what are the advantages? First of all, why we need the micro front end? It allows us to expose shareable widgets, services, pages, which are the composition applications we have. But if we work like that, the pure way, we'll get the chaos, which we don't have the contract between the application. We don't know what we're exposing, what people are consuming, and if I'm going to apply any breaking changes. And also, how do I know who is consuming user? My application is something that everyone just can consume from a CDN, so I need to understand what is the dependency graph. And now it's become more complex. There are two ways to solve it. We'll discuss about the library approach and the anti-corruption layer approach, but before we will deep dive into those approaches, first of all, let's try to understand what applications are built out. And I think some of you already saw that pattern a lot of time, maybe from old the, uh, methodologies from Java, maybe. So we have several layers of the application. We have the composition layer, which actually exposes different pages that consumes widgets, which have the, their own functionality, their own business logic. And this business logic is actually come from the services because it shouldn't be implemented in components, right? That's what we always told. Components should be lean. And then we have the communication layer. This is how I communicate with my web services. And eventually, I might want to store the data, maybe in state management like Redux, in a singleton services, in local storage, session storage, cookies, all of, those we are, all of those are able to manage. Now, yeah, so we understand what are those. Now, when we are talking about different micro applications, we need to understand how they communicate with each other. And this is a bit, yeah, okay. So how do I communicate with each other? So let's start from right to left. We all, all of us have the core libraries, I assume. You have your, you're using PrimeG, you're using Material UI, right? Angular Material. Those are core libraries that can share the cross and doesn't have any domain context, meaning I can use any of those libraries to build different applications and not necessarily my feed or my user page or my admin page, I can use those components to build anything that I want. Now, on top of those, I'm actually developing the specific feature. I'm developing the admin widgets that I can consume, the feed widgets that I might want later on to inject into the user page, the profile page. I want to show the 
profile of the user and his feed. So I'm now starting to develop different widgets based on the core libraries and then to build different pages, which are my composition application layer. So I'm building pages using widgets, using some atoms, some components that are dumb components. And eventually, some term that I guess all of you that raised their hand when I asked about microphone that you already heard about that, the shell, which is actually equivalent to API Gateway on the back end. It's just the entry point and knows where to navigate when I'm, I don't know, go to feed or go to user. Now, at the beginning we said there is an issue that I don't have a contract. And in order to preserve the contract, the contract libraries approach actually say, okay, use semantic versioning. Package JSON provided, provided to us. So we have different version. Each version expose its own functionality, its own um, signature. And then if I'm doing any modification, I won't be affected because I'm not consuming the latest version. So what is the issue with that? So if you're looking on this diagram, you can see I'm now injecting the same user library three times, which is, maybe it's good. I don't want to be affected of changes, but on the other end, there are some disadvantages here. For example, bundle size increased. That's not good. Performance become worse, and that's, that's not what I want for microphone. Then. Data corruption. Maybe version 1.2 1 1 .2 is storing data in some way, and version 2.0.0 is overriding the data and will store it in a different way, which version 1.2.0 won't know how to parse. So that's only also an issue. And the third one, which we still have, is the complex of deployment, deployment dependencies. Because if I apply, let's say, a fix, a major fix now in the user libraries, so I need now to resolve all the dependencies and upgrade the version automatically and make sure that it's not break, broken, right? That's something I need to make sure about. So there are pros and cons with this approach and there is no one size fits to, for all. It, I'm not saying not to use the library approach, it's great, but there is another, uh, another option. And another option is the anti-corruption layer. So first of all, let's understand what is this term, anti-corruption. So we took the same layers that I presented before and we just add another layer on top of that. The reason it's on the side is because this is my only entry point to my application. So anyone that wants to consume my application should only communicate with the anti-corruption layer. It's a bombastic word for public APIs, for a specific service that I'm exposed, which AKA as facade Okay, if you heard about this term, it's just service that you do an injectable on top of that, but it has just subset of functionality and it's implement a specific interface that you will always preserve. Okay, so now let's look how the graph is looks like. So the only thing I changed here is this layer. Instead of having it as a feature library layer, it's a feature application layer it's being able to consume in one time. I'm able to consume each application in one time. But I'm communicating only with the anti-corruption layer, meaning I'm not communicating with the underlying services. I'm not communicating with the widgets found underneath that. Okay, I'm only communicating with the subset that I expose to everyone that consumes. Okay? So, yeah, a bit more um, intelligent microphone tent. I think we have time. Let's uh, talk about the advantages and disadvantages and then jump into the demo. So we still have a shareable widget and services because we are able to expose those from our, our micro front ends. Automatic propagation of an upgrade. On the libraries, I need to know which library I got changed and then to resolve all the application that consumes that and to apply an upgrade and then there is a mismatch between the versions and all these nightmares. On this approach, we actually just say, okay, I update my application. I didn't change anything on the interface. I just changed what implemented inside of that, the logic itself. So everyone that consumes me will get it automatically. And using this contract between the application is preventing the breaking changes. 
And because we are exposing just subset of our functionality, I don't care about what people are consuming because I know exactly that it's something that I uh, have on my contract. So now I can refactor, I implement all of my functionality, all of my services, even remove services, as long of, as long as the service that is my public ABI, my facade, remains the same. So refactor has become more simpler. Um, on, the other, on the other side, the disadvantages, yes, yeah, so there is another layer now that I need to maintain, and not everyone knows about the concept of facade and what to expose and what not to expose, and it's more simple to just import the service that found on the lightest facade, so why, would, why we need to have another abstraction layer on top of that? So there is learning curve here. We need to do education to our engineers, but eventually we need to have loosely coupled between the different applications. And of course, if we have two applications that communicate with each other, so it's better to have integration tests like we have on the backend. It's also applicable here. Let's see a demo. So this is my uh, nice application. <laughs> it doesn't have much. You just have the same thing I show on the diagram. The navigation bar, the feed, a user page that I can just switch to. Nice, looks good. And each one of those applications, of course, is a standalone application, which I can develop as a standalone application. So the shell is the one that connect all of the dots and create this monolith hosted application. And let's colorize that so it will be simpler to talk about that. So purple is navigation bar. This is blue. I don't know it's purple, but this is blue. The blue is the feed. The yellow is the user application. And as you can see, the feed is actually consume data and components <coughs> from the user application. There is the user name, which Feed doesn't need to know who is the user that just logged in. And there is the user avatar that I'm just providing the ID of the user, but the, again, the feed doesn't need to know how to resolve that, how to get the avatar, the name, how, how to parse it, what are the properties that I need to, to, to use. And of course, on the navbar as well, I have my avatar on the top. So it's the same thing here. Let's see how it's implemented on the code. So first of all, the structure. So we have our applications here. I'm using NX because it's really simplified, I think, when I'm working on, working on Monorepo. Um, so I have my applications. I have my feed application. I have my user application, my shell application, and login and navigation bar. We will focus on the feed, navigation bar, shell, and user. So the shell, yes, I will do that in a sec. Just let me open the shell. Okay, so the shell is actually, it is that better? Yeah. Okay, the shell is actually doing a lazy load input. And then you will tell me, okay, you are cheating. This is not a micro front end. This is just lazy loaded route. We learned about that. You are correct, but there is a bit different thing about that. It's using Webpack 5 with Module Federation. So if I will go to the config, you will see I have here something called Module Federation plugin. I won't, won't get into it, and uh, there is a later on um, another lecture about micro front end and how Module Federation is working. But trust me, it's actually exposing my routes and knows how to load different applications from different routes. So if you will look here, and I hope you're able to see the port, so it changed. Each application has its own port. So it can be its own CDN. I don't mind. So the shell is just loading each of my composition application, each of the pages. Using lazy load, but not lazy load from the bundle that I'm now building the application, but from different application that got deployed. Fit component is actually um, injecting user facade, which implement the I user facade. And as you can see here, I'm actually implement, uh, imported from two different places. The top one on the highlighted part is for my micro, micro front end using module federation. It knows how to resolve. And the second one is in build time to apply static code analysis. Okay, we want to check there's no breaking changes in the interface. And if, interfaces got, if the interface got changed, 
I need to rebuild the application and run the tests. Okay? Let's, I know I'm short on time. How much do I have? Thanks. Okay, so let's see. I took here the facade, I took the active user, I took the name from the active user, and on the template I just use the NGRX push, or it can be async pipe, never mind, it's doing almost the same, to just generate my name. Okay, so let's see what will happen if I will go to the user facade and instead, this is the interface, Let's go to whoever implemented. And instead of having it, this ugly uppercase, just leave it as it should be. So let's remove this transform username. Now, I'm not having any ng serve. There is no black magic here, I promise you. I will just build my user application using ng build user, not building anything else. Okay, let's see. And as you can see, it changed automatically. <laughs> now, let's see how it will affect on components. I will change my component as well. I don't want the radius to be 10%, I want it to be 100%. And of course, I can do any modification that I want. I can do it also on the code itself. Yeah, so building component taking longer, it's need to resolve the dependency, so give it a while. Of course, I can do it, I, I done it on CSS because it's simple to present, but I can do it also on the logic as well. So if I want to change the way it presented, I want to show the title of the user or anything else, I can do it as well. So now if I will refresh, as you can see, it changed on the feed, it changed on the navigation bar, and if I will go to the user application, it will change there as well. So this is micro front end, and this is how we are using anti-corruption layer in order to prevent breaking changes between those. So thank you everyone. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>